Hi, I'm Mark Medina with the LA Times. I'm here back at Staples Center following another Laker victory. They're now 6-0 on the season after their 108-103 win over the Toronto Raptors, and, and that keeps them as one of only three remaining NBA teams that still have that undefeated mark. New Orleans Hornets also have that, so do the Atlanta Hawks. But I wouldn't say uh, the Lakers were exactly thrilled with the performance they played against Toronto. They, they jumped out to an early lead. Uh, double-digit lead in the first quarter and then everyone everything sort of went south um, with just bad defense bad communication on pick and rolls uh, bad help defense in the interior allowing uh, you know the various Raptors players to drive through the lane and that's the fifth time so far in six games this season where the Lakers have given up at least a hundred points and, and so far the Lakers have been able to outscore their opponents but I think it's definitely a problem uh, you know, looking forward. Obviously, the Lakers could definitely benefit once Andrew Bynum comes back to the lineup, which is expected somewhere around Thanksgiving. A lot of the players and Coach Phil Jackson mentioned that just his size, presence in the lane really helps intimidate people from driving in there, really helps on the rotation. And, you know, his frame itself speaks for itself. It adds another big body to, to the Lakers' front line. But that's going to be about, you know, at, at least a month away. So the Lakers have to correct some of their issues involving the defensive effort because uh, you're going to see, I think, in, in tougher opponents later down the road, you know, which could begin as early as Sunday against Portland, where, you know, maybe the team falls into an offensive funk. They aren't able to get that rhythm. So I don't think that the Lakers should, uh, you know, kind of rest their foundation on just being outscore their opponents. But Lakers were able to do that tonight. Kobe Bryant had a tr another terrific game, scoring 23 points, went 6 of 12 from the field, went to the free throw line, went 11 of 12 from there, had uh, six assists. So, I mean, he was distributing the ball all over the place. Uh, Steve Blake and, and Shannon Brown, uh, they combined for 26 points off the bench. Pau Gasol had 30 points, 12 of 22 shooting. Um, Lamar Odom didn't exactly have the, the typical night that we've seen so far as of late through the first five games. Uh, he only had seven points on two of ten shooting. He had nine rebounds. Um, but that's not the main area of concern. There's going to be games like that. The main area of concern, the Lakers, besides from the defense, they're out rebounded 49 to 31. And frankly, I think that's something that's unacceptable. The Lakers have the front line talent in Lamar Odom in Pau Gasol. And even if they're hurting, in terms of the rotation without Andrew Bynum, they should be able to clean the glass there. Um, and by the fact that they allowed Toronto to get back in the game, starters weren't able to get as much rest as they were before earlier this season when they were blowing opponents out. Uh, Pau Gasol had to play 43 minutes. It's definitely something that he wasn't thrilled about after the game. I mean, it kind of is what it is. The Lakers needed him down the stretch to secure the win. But coming against a team that hasn't made the playoffs and a team that doesn't have Chris Bosh. That's something that the Lakers, uh, you know, kind of blew an opportunity. Derek Fisher had some terrific insight into saying that you really can't expect you're going to blow a team out all the time. You, you have to be prepared to rise to the occasion for these type of adversity tests, which is something that Phil Jackson also mentioned. But I brought up the point that Phil Jackson mentioned before the game of the importance that starters get their rest um, you know obviously age and just basketball mileage and fatigue is catching up to the, a lot of the Lakers so as many games as they can to get rest it's going to be good and obviously that can't come every game but when you're playing again again against a team that that you know entered the game one and three you would think okay this is a good opportunity to to establish the lead get the bench some minutes and, and take it easy to to rest and refuel for later games down the line, but that obviously didn't happen tonight. But Lakers showed that they're capable of, uh, you know, handling a, a game that's pretty close late down the stretch.